Miles Wingrave is the surviving son of the late Charlotte and Dominic Wingrave. He and his sisters are heirs to the Wingrave fortune, and at the start of the show are residing at Bly Manor. When audiences first are introduced to Miles, he is a very polite, bright, and charming English boy. He seems to have a good relationship with his sister Flora and the staff who work at Bly. He's happy to meet his new American au pair, Danny Clayton, and even offers her a kiss on the hand, to which she comments, What a gentleman. Initially, Miles seems like a normal, happy, and cheerful boy. All seems well until Danny catches him peeping at her through the door as she changes her clothes. When caught, he excuses himself by saying he just wanted to give her another welcome to Bly, and offers her a butterfly hair comb clip. It is revealed later that this hair comb clip used to belong to Rebecca Jessel, the previous au pair who is now deceased. In this exchange, his whole demeanor is off. He gives an air of forced politeness, and there is a sense of hostility behind his posh demeanor. There's something wrong with Miles. This, however, is only the start of one of the show's main big mysteries. Miles will continue his strange behavior throughout the show. One moment, he will behave as a normal boy should, and the next he will have a strange outburst of aggression and disdain. While these strange behaviors may be expected for a grieving child, who has just lost both of his parents, there are more malevolent forces at work at Bly that are influencing the young Miles. Miles is shown to be an inquisitive and bright young man. In the episode The Pupil, we get a glimpse of Miles' school life, and in particular, a lecture with Father Stack that will be of great importance to foreshadowing a central plot to the show. A portion of the lecture focuses on a verse from the Gospel of Mark, Mark 13. Quote, now there on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about two thousand, rushed down the steep bank into the lake, and were drowned in the lake. This is a passage describing events in which Jesus cast demon out of a man and into a herd of pigs. Miles asks Father Stack a question. He asks if the demons needed permission by Jesus to enter the pigs, to which Father Stack replies, yes. Miles then continues to ask an astute question. Did they need it from him, though? Did they need it from the man? To which Father Stack replies that yes, they did need his permission. As human free will and autonomy is one of the greatest gifts that God has bestowed upon humans, that not even demons will be able to usurp this will without first getting permission. He continues saying, Evil persists, but we are not compelled. This is a huge plot point for the whole show. The spirits will not be able to enter another person's body without first being given permission by the host. After the lecture, Miles receives a post from Flora. This letter will begin a chain of events that will lead Miles to more troubling behavior, and ultimately, back to Bly Manor. First, during recess, Miles climbs a tall tree. He then intentionally falls out of the tree, injuring himself. When his friend Hooper asks him later that night why he jumped, Miles mumbles, just looking for the right key before dismissing Hooper's concerns, and lying to him, saying that he just fell. The next day, Miles violently attacks Hooper to the point of choking Hooper unconscious. 
Father Stax convinces the headmaster to let Miles stay and tries to reach out to Miles, taking initiative to try to mentor him and help him through his grief. As Father Stack tries to comfort Miles, the subject of the lecture and the herd of pigs get brought up again. When Father Stack comments that no one is without blame except those who have yet to be conceived and the animals, he points out his beloved pigeon, which he uses an example for this innocence. Miles regards that then this wasn't very fair that Jesus allowed the herd of swines to be possessed, since they were innocent. Father Stack replies that, maybe not, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Father Stack tries to get Miles to better cope with his parents' death. He tells Miles that they are at a better place. Earlier in the episode, he also tells Miles to read John 16.22 which says, So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. Miles still cannot seem to accept that his parents are not coming back, saying, They're not coming back. That's not fair either. Why do the bad ones get to come back and not them? In the next scene, Father Stack is cleaning up after a service. He hears a noise in the church and goes to investigate. He finds his beloved pigeon dead and placed on the altar like a sacrifice. Miles is brought to the headmaster's office, where once again Father Stack tries to help him and tries to get him to open up. Miles only responds with, we are not compelled using Father Stack's own teaching against him. The headmasters and the other fathers decide to forgive Miles if he would just say words of apology and repentance, to which Miles coldly replies, I'm sorry, I didn't do worse. Cut off its head, spread out the insides, or burn it. Sorry, I didn't do worse. Miles is then expelled from school. In a passing quiet moment when Miles is alone with Father Stack, he genuinely apologized for what he did to the pigeon, saying, I'm sorry, Father. I needed to find your key. That's all. Miles' actions tell very two different tales here, which will become a theme for his character. He is a boy of dualities and duplicities. While Miles is not malicious or cruel, he does seemingly cruel and malicious things to Father Stack and his friend Hooper, and it is revealed in the next scene why he does this. As Cooper is getting ready for bed, he finds the letter that was sent by Flora, under Miles' pillow. The letter says, come home, with a drawing of Flora crying near a sad Miss Jessel and a man who may be Peter Quint. This letter is what set off the chain of events that led Miles to his expulsion. He intentionally hurt himself to try to get sent home. He seems to have gotten this idea when he saw that one of his classmates, Brian Duncan, was not present at school due to an injury. When this didn't work, he escalated to hurting his friend Hooper. When Father Stack still forgived him for that, he decided to kill the pigeon. So he did not harm himself and others for a malicious purpose, but ultimately for his sister. He wanted to return home to her, so he found a way that he will get expelled and sent home. Now this parallels with the lecture with Father Stax about how we are not compelled by evils and demons but can still do harm by willingly choosing to invite evil within ourselves. Miles here takes on the role of both Jesus and the possessed man in the story. Like Jesus, Miles will sacrifice animals to try to save others. Jesus lets the demons into the herd of swine to save the man. Miles kills the pigeon to save his sister.
But Miles' story will take an even darker turn with the other portion of the story, the part about spirits and possessions. This we will go in depth later in the video. In a flashback to when Miles Wingrave first met Rebecca Jessel, we see him interact with Peter Quint. Peter stands to the side and lights up a cigarette. Miles makes a comment on how Peter shouldn't smoke, to which Peter responds, Hey, you're right. But Peter does continue to smoke. As a nice gesture, Peter hands Miles his lighter and teaches him how to use it. The young Miles start to begin to look up to Peter, almost as a big brother figure or even a parental figure. With Miles' father Dominic dead and his uncle Harry absent, Miles seems to have gravitated to Peter Quint, who works as his uncle's assistant. As Peter and Rebecca's relationship develops into a more intense romance, Peter spends more and more time with the children at Bly. For a time, Peter and Rebecca seem to have become surrogate parents to the grieving children, and all seems well. Peter even bestows some of his wisdom onto Miles, showing Miles the subtle art of manipulation. In Episode 3, The Two Faces Part 1, Peter Quint comes to Bly Manor on an errand from Henry Wingrave. He stops by the classroom and gives Flora some roses, to which the excited Flora shares the roses with Miss Jessel. Miles question why Peter gives Flora the flowers instead. Here, Peter teaches Miles his philosophy on people. Peter compares this to finding a person's key. Keys. See? People are like locked rooms. They all've got different locks, and you've got to guess the shape of their key. Like how they are keys to all the doors in this pointlessly, excessively large house. Different keys to different doors. So if you want someone to open the door, you have to try out different keys until you find the one that works. People like your uncle, his key is money or flattery. For horses, it's carrots. And for women, well, most of them, it's flowers. A perplexed Miles asks Peter, then why did you give the flowers to Flora? To which Peter responds, I didn't. Here, Peter means that when he gives the flowers to Flora, he didn't really give it to Flora. He means to give it to Rebecca, but he uses Flora as a conduit, so Rebecca will have to accept the roses. This exchange will greatly affect Miles and is the reason for his expulsion from boarding school. During the flashbacks to Miles' days at school, Miles mentions finding the correct keys, a direct reference to what Peter Quint had taught him. Miles wanted to be sent home from boarding school, so he tried different keys. First he tried to hurt himself. When that didn't work, he hurt his friend. Father Stack became an advocate for Miles and argued for Miles to be kept at school, so Miles had to figure out Father Stack's key that would allow him to go home. Unfortunately, that key took the shape of the innocent pigeon, and the pigeon is the embodiment of innocence. So when that innocence is harmed, Miles thought that would be enough to get Father Stack to dismiss him. But when that was still not enough to deter Father Stack, Miles needed Father Stack to see him as someone who is no longer innocent, and also one who will not willingly repent. Of course, this cold exterior was a front, and the horrible killing of the pigeon was just a means to an end. Miles is quite repentant and sorry he had hurt Father Stack. He only genuinely apologizes when he is already expelled and there is nothing that can be done about the situation. So Father Stack's key was helping those who are innocent and protecting innocence. What is Miles' key? Miles' key is his family 
and in this case in particular, his sister, Flora. Miles is driven and motivated to be reunited with his family. When Flora sends him the cryptic letter, Miles believed that it was a cry for help, so he does whatever it takes to get expelled to be sent home to Bly. There, he seems like his usual self again. He seems to be happy back at Bly, playing with Flora. But the story is not quite so simple, for spirits trapped at Bly Manor will try to compel Miles and Flora, and the young Miles is no match for the machinations of such forces, especially not against someone as manipulative and selfish as Peter Quint. Throughout the show, Miles sporadically displays strange and unsettling behavior. As mentioned before, we first see this when he peeps in on Danny as she is changing. In episode 2, The Pupil, Miles apologizes to Danny for all his bad behaviors. He offers her roses, a scene that mirrors Peter Quinn's scene with the roses. The roses are almost identical to the roses Peter had given Flora. He beckons Danny closer and whispers in her ear, saying, Such a draining thing dealing with children, before tucking her hair behind her ear, obviously making Danny very uncomfortable. Miles then casually walks off whistling. In the next scene, it is revealed that the roses were cut from Jamie's garden which angers Jamie, as the roses were not ready to be cut. This also confirms that the roses that Peter had given to Flora were from Jamie's garden. However, when Peter had cut the roses from Jamie's garden, previously, Miles had commented that Jamie would not like that very much, showing that he does know that it is wrong to do so. This further hints and foreshadows the strong connection between Miles Wingrave and Peter Quint. Later that night, when the children do a good job with their nightly chores and routine, Danny decides to play a game with them as a nice treat. They decide to play a quick game of hide and seek. While the game initially begins normally enough, the game shifts to a more sinister tone when Miles seemingly lays a trap for Danny in the forbidden wing of the house. An old music box is laid out in the open, playing a song. This catches Danny's attention, so she kneels down to investigate. She finds an old Polaroid picture of Rebecca Jessel and Peter Quint in the music box. Suddenly, Miles jumps out of his hiding spot and puts a chokehold on Danny. He starts to tighten his hold on Danny's throat, before suddenly releasing her and running off, yelling a countdown as it begins his turn. Danny is fed up with the game, and calls after him that the game is over, but Miles completely ignores her and runs off. Danny gives chase after him, only to suddenly stop when she sees a strange blurry image of Peter Quint in the window. She goes after Peter with a fire poker, but as she makes her way outside, she sees Miles in the same window where she saw Peter, except now she's looking into the house. Miles is on the opposite side of the window. He calls out to her, telling her he doesn't feel very well before falling unconscious. This scene is significant for its huge hint to the audience about the truth behind Miles' strange behavior. With the staff on full alert, they all gather together in front of the fireplace. The police are notified, but do not seem to take the issue very seriously. Miles and Flora are then woken so they can go to bed. To which Miles makes a strange comment to Hannah. He says, I had a bad dream. I hurt you, and it made me feel sad. Tragically, this is not a dream but a fragment of a memory. Later in the episode, what seems like the next night, Flora and Miles put on a puppet show for the staff at Bly. Miles plays the role of a puppet named Poppet. 
He launches into a monologue that starts off light and silly, but the tone shifts quite suddenly when he comes to the part where he laments about Claude, the puppet maker, coming back after a long time away to find that his puppets had forgotten him, and even forgotten that there were puppets at all. Quote, For they have forgotten him, you see, and their strings. They laughed when he said he'd made them. They laughed at him, and he was so sad. They kept laughing, these stupid puppets, these stupid puppets who had forgotten. So he pulled on their strings, and it hurt. The full truth isn't revealed until episode 5, Altar of the Dead. The timeline for this episode will jump from past and present frequently. Hannah watches as Miles harasses Jamie while Jamie's on a ladder. Hannah and Jamie are obviously very upset with him, but he only responds to Jamie saying, You're pretty when you're flushed. Hannah then catches Miles smoking, which greatly upsets her but only gets a derisive response from Miles, who simply just mockingly says, Honestly, Hannah. He runs off, leaving her perplexed at his cold demeanor. Near the end of the episode, jumping to the past, Hannah sees Peter Quint standing next to Miles near a well. This seems to be set right after Rebecca had already died and Peter had gone, presumably missing with the stolen money, taken from Lord Wingrave. Hannah confronts Peter and tells Miles to step away from him. But Peter tells her, Honestly, Hannah, don't you ever get tired of being such a, I swear, such a bore, don't know when. Miles finishes Peter's sentence, To leave well enough alone, for fuck's sake, woman. Why can't you just leave well enough alone? This outbreak from Miles surprises Hannah, and she is aghast and calls out to Miles. But Miles responds, no. Most of the time, but not right now. And believe me, nothing will make me happier than to be arrested by the police you were talking about, to be dragged off of this fucking property, away from this god-awful trap. But I can't. Can I? Hannah comes to the realization that she really isn't talking to Miles, but to Peter Quint. She realizes that Peter is dead and is possessing Miles. But before she could really do anything about it, the possessed Miles pushes Hannah into the wells, screaming, Honestly, Hannah! Killing her. Miles comes too, with Peter leaving his body. A surprised and confused Miles says, Mrs. Gross, I'm having the strangest dream. He is confused as to where he is. Before he could think or say anything further, Danny Clayton arrives at Bly, leading to the beginning of the show. This finishes the loop to episode one. With this revelation, a lot of things falls into place. So I want to revisit the monologue that Miles had done while Peter was possessing him. This is the monologue about the puppets. Peter is frustrated with the staff at Bly. He loathes them and he maliciously harasses them every chance he gets. We will dive back into Peter Quint in more detail in his own video. So I want to focus on Miles here, but it becomes important to discuss Peter a little bit in this section, because Peter exerts his will onto others. But when people don't allow him to control them, like Hannah, he becomes violent. He seems to loathe women, yet he covets them, as seen in this unhealthy obsession with Rebecca Jessel. Again, we d we'll dive more into this relationship in another video. Peter also enjoys harassing Jamie and Danny when in control of Miles' body. He finds the women beautiful, but he is very malicious towards them. 
he seems to gain a great deal of satisfaction making them uncomfortable and angry. With Hannah, he hates her so much that he takes the opportunity to murder her callously. Unfortunately, he uses the poor Miles as his puppet to do so. Not all of Miles' strange behaviors were due to possession, however, like the previously mentioned boarding school incidents. So here we will break down his other strange behaviors. In the first episode, Flora and Miles lock Danny Clayton in the closet and lies and refuses to let her out. The reason for this isn't revealed until episode 4, The Way It Came. When Flora notices that the talisman of the Lady in the Lake in the dollhouse has moved, she immediately calls out for Miles. The two children go to intercept Danny as she's wandering through the house. Flora feigns a nightmare to distract Danny. As the children hold Danny's attention, the Lady in the Lake wanders through the house, inexorably making her way through her usual route up the stairs and into the master bedroom. Now the children do this to protect Danny from the lady in the lake, saving her life. This is the same reason why the children had locked Danny in the closet on the second night that Danny arrives to Bly. When Danny would not stay in her room due to her restlessness, Flora knows Danny will be walking in the path of the lady in the lake, so the siblings take action. But why are the children so sure that the Lady in the Lake is dangerous? That isn't revealed until Episode 5, The Altar of the Dead. Flashbacks are shown to the night that Peter Quint disappeared. While at Bly Manor, Peter had snuck into the forbidden wing of the house. He did so under the cover of night, and had stolen some of the Windsgrave's valuable jewelry. As he makes his way out, he sees the children in the hallway and stops to say something to them. Unfortunately for him, this puts him right in the path of the lady in the lake. She catches him off guard, catching him by the neck. She proceeds to throttle him to death, dragging his body along her path from the bedroom into the hallway and back into the lake. Peter Quint is now dead, but his spirit becomes trapped at Bly Manor. The children and Peter can only watch in horror as the Lady of the Lake finishes up her rounds, with Peter's body still in her firm grip. Peter rages at this and calls out to the Lady of the Lake, but he accidentally bumps into Miles, leading to the first possession. Like mentioned before, Miles Wingrave is shown to be an intelligent and sweet boy, but he can be manipulative and duplicitous at times when he needs to be. He will lie to protect those he cares about, and he never seemingly does anything malicious without a reason. This sweet nature is what Peter Quint will prey on when it becomes apparent that Peter cannot leave Bly Manor in his current state. Peter comes up with a plan to possess Miles, in which he will be able to use the boy as a living host to escape Bly Manor's curse. But like the demons in the story of Legion, he cannot enter without permission, so he needs Miles to agree to let him in. Peter does this by promising the children that they will live in their forever home where they would be reunited with their parents and live out their days in their best memories. This is what happens during possession, or what they call dream hopping. When someone is being possessed, they are tucked away. This is a pacifying term for what essentially is a relinquishment of control. During these moments of being tucked away, a person will relive their past memories, sometimes of their choosing, making it very alluring for the children since they can relive moments with their late parents. 
Miles, who is very fond of Peter, and wanting to help him and Rebecca, reluctantly agrees, seeing that this is the best solution for everyone. He and his sister will get to see their parents again, and Peter and Rebecca will be saved from Bly Manor. So the kind-hearted Miles agrees, and Peter tucks Miles away, seemingly for good. This all links back to Miles' conversation with Father Stack about Jesus, the demons, and the herd of pigs. What would compel a man to let a demon into himself? Well, the answer for Miles seems to be for the greater good. But here he has been coerced and preyed upon by Peter Quint. For Peter manipulated Miles' grief and good kind disposition turning the innocent Miles into an accomplice. Miles Wingrave was ultimately saved by Danny Clayton when she offered herself up to the Lady in the Lake in Flora's place. The curse over Bly was broken, and Peter Quint was released and disappeared into the unknown. Miles and Flora get a second chance at reforming a family with Henry Wingrave, Miles' uncle and Flora's true biological father. Henry falls into a paternal role, promising the children to tell them stories of their parents. This seems to be what the children wanted all along, a way to reconnect with their parents in a meaningful way. Henry will be able to give the children that without the strings that Peter so loved to pull. The Wingraves seemingly leave England and head to America for a fresh new start. When Danny, Jamie, and Owen reunite years later at Owen's restaurant, they have a conversation about how the children are doing. Owen notes that something strange has happened to them. Miles and Flora seemingly have lost a lot of their memories regarding their time at Bly. They recognized Hannah's photograph, but only remembering her as a lady that they stayed at Bly with. They remember staying at Bly very briefly, regarding it as a summer home. They have vague recollections and can no longer remember specific details. Sadly, this probably means they no longer remember Danny Clayton the young American au pair who saved their lives. It is never really clear why this forgetfulness sets in to just the children. Perhaps it was due to their young age, but there might be more at play here. This eerily echoes what happens to the ghosts at Bly. The forgetfulness and loss of specific details. But in this case, it seems that the fading of the memories and the passage of time is a blessing, allowing the children to live their lives untainted by the horrors that they endured. The true horror of Bly is how it defies the natural order. The lady in the lake refused to leave Bly even after her death, exerting her will over Bly and others who reside there. This also causes anyone to happen to have died at Bly to remain there forever. The poor souls who are trapped here are forced to exist through the passage of time, slowly forgetting pieces of themselves as the years pass on. Bly also allows spirits to possess the living. Allowing another to usurp control is unnatural and abhorrent. Perhaps when the curse was broken, some of the unnatural effects of Bly simply gave way to the natural world. Since the children's autonomy was taken away from them when they were tucked away by Peter and Rebecca, and they had to experience so much of the unnatural ways of Bly, when the curse was finally broken, the natural world was once again allowed to reassert itself onto the children. Memories tied to the souls, the possessions, even Bly Manor itself was slowly forgotten over the years, and the children were allowed to live their lives on their own terms, in their own way, almost like the world was balancing itself out. In the end, Miles and Flora grow up to have normal lives in America, and become seemingly happy people, 
which is what Danny would have wanted all along. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the like button and subscribe, and leave a comment. Thanks again.